Welcome to People Love Process. Inspiration for me happens in a lot of different ways. A random thought might put me down the path where I think of something that intrigues me and that might inspire me, or I read an article that makes me curious. And in this movie's case, it was an archeology span post I saw on Instagram about Egypt. That made me go look up the history of Nefertari, and when I did, I was inspired by what I saw. Now, these images reflect the, the history of Egypt that I kind of dived into one night, and it really intrigued me. I thought this was a crazy headdress that this queen would wear, and when I first looked at it, I go, wait a minute, is that a turkey? I don't think I don't think it's a turkey. I think it's like a vulture or a buzzard type of uh, species of bird. Uh, but it was definitely interesting. All the ornamentation, the feathers, the scales, uh, the the jewelry that she's wearing. Um, I just thought, wow, this would be fun to kind of do something kind of graphic with it. Now, at the time, I was doing an art series called Modern Culture, where I did a design every day for a whole year. Those were square proportioned, and I used geometric building with it, mainly strokes and basic shapes uh, to compose the visual narrative. And so when I saw this, I go, oh, I have to do a Nefertari one. And I did. And this is how that came out. And this was one of my top five favorites out of the 374 I created. And I want, I knew I wanted to reapproach this theme at some point, but do it a little more realistically proportions, but keep that same geometry in, in basic shapes intact because that's part of the charm of this style. So that's what we're going to do in this movie. When I started, I wanted good reference. So I went to Adobe Stock. I wanted a good profile shot. I wanted to face left to face right instead of the way I had it in my modern culture art. So I found this shot. This is going to make the perfect queen uh, for the profile shot. And then what I'm going to show you next is kind of Frankensteining uh, with Photoshop. Now, I got this tactic from an old creative director I used to work with, and he would do the same thing where he would just shove all these different images he would find in places and just mash it together and do a Frankenstein job just for no other reason than reference. Um, it's not like he used these. These were just to guide his proportions and to make sure that what he was drawing would um, kind of work. And that's kind of what I did here. I took the photograph here. Uh, there was a Cleopatra costume I saw with this collar. And so I liked the collar. I knew I wanted to have some detail here. And then these wings came from a, a, another costume for a headdress. And I know they were probably inspired by the same thing. And so I said, wow, I love how they shape the wings. That's kind of what I do. I think these are too many. I'm going to simplify it down and distinctly go from small to really large down here in terms of the wings to kind of give it a visual movement, if you will. Um, I know I'm going to have scales on the back. I'm not going to shape them like that, but we will have scales since even the historic reference showed that. Uh, this piece here came from, I think it was a Roman soldier helmet, but I just like the shape of it. So I just put that in, cobbled it together, dropped in some geometric shapes to, re to uh, represent other elements I was going to build. And then this was part of another um, kind of a, a, I think it was a hat or something. And I like the way this looked. I like the angle of kind of what these would be, the feathers of the bird. And this represents the tail. Now, the headdress on top, this is what wasn't showing the historic reference. Well, you saw part of it. You saw the base part, but you didn't see these snakes really called out well. And the more I looked into this, I saw that there was snakes that were here. And if we go back to the historic reference and take a look, if you look at this one down here, you can see these are like little snake shapes here. And if you uh, go to the top one up here, you can see these are somewhat, these look less <laughs> like snakes and more like milk duds of sorts, but we're gonna distinctly uh, make them uh, snakes. So that's where, 
after I put together, I drew out a crude sketch. I'm going to make this more snakes. We're going to take a little more artistic license. But I use this to start drawing on top of. And then if I don't like it, I'll redraw it until I get a nice sketch going. Now, you can see here, I was trying to diff a few different things on the headdress, but ended up deciding to make it a little more ornate and not so kind of, this I thought was too uh, uh, rigid. I like the flow of this one better. So that's where I started drawing off of my reference. Once I had a, a nice rough drawing built, normally I'll go in and I'll redraw it and draw it in a more refined fashion to really dial in those shapes. But I decided on this one, I didn't need to do that. And that's because we're not building free form here. We're gonna use geometric shapes and there's not going to be a lot of Bezier curve work to this. Now, the only part of the drawing that's symmetric is the headdress at the top here. And you can notice this is kind of how I'm thinking I want to handle uh, the collar on uh, uh, this, this queen here. And I'm going to have some detail here. This is just basically to remind me that I want to have some kind of scallop shapes in there, if you will. So... We're going to start building this out. So let's go ahead and turn on this layer. And you can see I'm already starting to build out some of the shapes. Let's zoom in so you can see what's going on. Obviously, the easiest shapes to discern are the circular shapes in a design. Those are all easy and created using the ellipse tool over here. Here we have a square with rounded corners, another easy shape to create. And we have all this content going already. Now, when it comes to building certain shapes, even though it's uh, simple, if you look at the ear, it's curved here, curved at the bottom, it's going to be easier if you think in a straight line format. Now, some of the content in this design, such as this headdress element here, if I select this, you can see it goes at a certain angle. So I just use that to start my side of the ear here, but all of these are just corner anchor points. There are no uh, rounds here. It's easier to build it straight like this. And then all you have to do is isolate these corners. So we'll select these with the direct selection tool. Make sure we have a uh, show corner widget on because if you don't, I add it off. Uh, these controls won't show up, but we'll just select these anchors. I can then just use the corner widget rounding in Illustrator by default and just make that round down there. That's a whole lot easier than trying to build uh, with the pin tool and put those rounds in as I'm building it. I can do the same thing out here, just select both and round it. And that's how easy it is to build shapes like that. So if you can think in shapes and build straight, I'm going to show you a few more examples of that. It's going to make the process a whole lot faster. Once we have this shape here, uh, we're going to go ahead and offset. So we're going to go up to object. We're going to go to path. We're going to go to offset. We're going to open this up. Right now it's defaulting to 10, but we want to eat on the inside. So we're going to go negative and we'll just punch in a number. We'll try 10. 10 might work. We'll preview it. Uh, maybe a little more. Let's go 12. That looks good. So we'll click it. So now that's all we've done to get the inside of the shape. Now at times it might, when you take a shape and you in, uh, inset it in this case or offset it, it might like attach itself to their shape. That's easy. Just double click into it, select this, copy it, and then paste in front just to, so it's not uh, selecting both when you select it. All we're going to do now is we're going to go over to the scissor tool because I don't need all of this. All I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it here and cut it here like that. We can select the part we're not going to use and just toss it. That gives me the inner detail of the ear. I'll just copy this. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. I'll go ahead and copy this. Command C, Command F. Select it. I'm just going to scale it down to get that inside part of the ear. This anchor point I don't need, so I'll select it and delete it. I'll sample with the eyedropper to get the same weight align like that. And I think on this one, we'll move it up. Now notice, I'm just sliding it up on the path itself. 
and notice it's saying, hey, you're on a path. That's because I have smart guides turned on, command U. And you'll wanna use smart guides, so make sure to toggle them on, command U, and if they ever get in the way or try to snap to something you don't wanna to snap to, just toggle them off. Command U on, command U to toggle off. But if you hover over path, it tells you you're over a path. If you're over an anchor, it tells you over an anchor. Very helpful. Uh, for this type of geometric building. Now notice the terminations come to a flat cap. So we want to go to stroke and turn this into a round cap because that's just going to look better when it's all said and done. So we'll do that. Um, other detail, uh, like on the headdress itself, you know, it's easiest to create one here since this is a circle and it has a 12, 3, 6, and a 9 point on it. We can just select this, clone it, Command C, Command F, go to the Reflect tool, find a central anchor point, and with uh, Smart Guides on, Command U, we can reflect it over. We can select both of these, and I'm going to clone them again. That is Command C, Command F. I have that applied to an F3 key. If you don't, you're going to have to go up here and go Copy, then go up here again, go Paste in front, and you might even have to go arrange, bring to front. Well, I do all of that by just selecting, let's go ahead and deselect these. I'll just select these again. I just hit F3. It did all three commands. Then I go to the reflect tool, find this anchor point and reflect it over to get everything I need. So if you can set up your own keyboard shortcuts, it's gonna make vector building so much faster, so much more efficient. And if you want to know more about that, uh, check out my Creating with Keyboard Shortcuts movie on uh, uh, my YouTube channel, and you can customize your own. So it's really helpful uh, for the creative process. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just take shapes like these over here, and I'll clone it, Command-C, Command-F. And I'll just copy these over to get more shapes, maybe one more. Let's go ahead and copy this guy and move him over like that. So these are the type of building that I'm going to do. Let's go back to layers because I want to create some of the detail, such as in the headdress here. And this is where I'll take lines, uh, the created with the line tool, by the way, super easy there. And we just aligned it to uh, the angle we had the headdress. Now, shape uh, blending is really helpful because I want to create these lines, but I want an even gap between all of them. So you create the beginning and the end line however you want. You go to the shape blending tool, select it. You click one end of one path, the other end of the other path, and it'll automatically start the blend of those shapes. Now, to control how many just click into the blend options, you click, uh, double click on the blend tool, and then we're gonna go to specified steps. And in this case, we want three steps. You can preview it, that looks good, like that. And now you're gonna have to expand it, click okay. You might need to ungroup it a few times. And then we can get rid of the original ones since we don't need those, we just want these to be in here. Now, the easiest way to edit it in place is we're going to select this circle, select this shape. And uh, this is the nice thing about the shape building tool because uh, this is the most ideal way to use it when using strokes is we're just going to hold option down and minus that. We don't need this part. We'll minus that. Don't need that part. Go down here. We don't need this and we don't need that. And then on this one, we'll just select and delete. So that's how I would add uh, that kind of detail in there using two helpful uh, tools within Illustrator to get the detail in the headdress like that. Now, the whole aspect of building simple and then using the rounding tool applies to other things. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the face here. Even though my drawing of the face, if I turn this off, has all those curves in it, that's fine, but I don't have to build it that way. I could build it as simple, just straight line shapes, and then I can select these, and I can go in here, and I can go ahead and add the rounding like this, or take this one on the interior, 
and pull that out like that. Take this one and we're going to go ahead and pull it in kind of like that. It's easier to build it straight or we'll select all three of these and just round them like that. That's a whole lot easier than trying to build it with uh, uh, the Bezier or with the pen tool and then controlling Bezier. So uh, think in shapes, think how can you simplify something and then uh, go in and uh, just add rounds to create it. So if we take the eye here, same principle on the eye to create the curves we want we can select both of these, go to the shape building tool, hold option down and remove the part we don't want. So that's how you can think as you're building in this style. It, it's really helpful and it makes the process uh, go a lot faster. So let's keep uh, progressing this forward. Here's the top of the, the head that I went ahead and created. And now we're gonna um, do what seemingly seems like uh, the hardest part. And I'll admit, when I first uh, started building this, I was thinking, God, how am I gonna build the feathers? And I had to think a little bit, and that's the, the one thing. Look at it and figure out how would this be the easiest way to build it, but ensure it looks really good. And if you do that, you're going to be able to figure out uh, some interesting ways. So if I turn these paths on, all this is is one path here. This defines the interior row of the outside interior row of the feathers. And then this one is the bottom row exterior profile of the feathers. And then all these lines just represent the gaps. So how is this going to help us? Well, this is where you can think a little creatively is all we're going to do is we're going to select this line and this line and this line. We're going to clone these command C command F. Once again, I just hit my F3 key. And just so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to go ahead and let's say we'll color this. Uh, let's color this green, I guess like that. So you can see what we're doing there now. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the shape building tool and I'm going to hold option down. I'm going to minus this, minus this one, minus this one, and minus this one because all we need are these three now left. I'm going to group it before I deselect, group it. Now, why did I do that? Because group allows you to go into isolation mode. Right now, these are just on top of these other ones and it makes it harder to work. So if I double click into isolation mode, I can't select anything. And this, I'll select this corner and I'll go Command J to join them. Command J to join them. Then I can select that corner and I can pull out my uh, rounding with the corner widget built into Illustrator and I have one feather shape built. Now we're going to do the same thing on the outside row. So we'll select the outside path. We'll select this one and this one. I'll clone it again. Command C, Command F. Let's go ahead and change the colors so you can see what I'm working on. I'll go to the shape building tool, hold option down, and just remove the elements I don't want. Once you hover over it, it should highlight and then now those are gone. I'll command G to group it. Once again, I'll go into isolation mode. Make sure you're on this selection there. Select this, join it. Select those two corners, join it. Select this corner and round it. And I get that look that I want. Now on this one, let's go ahead and color this one this color because technically, if we click out of this now, you can see this overlaps part of the green. It doesn't have to. So what we're going to do is we're just going to slide this up until it snaps to that anchor point there. And this one goes all the way up to the corner like that. Now to add the, um, it's not a stem. What do they call that on a feather? Maybe it is a stem. I don't know. Whatever that, the vein or whatever, I don't even... I'm thinking leaves and this is a feather. So whatever they call the, the, the inner part, the spine, I don't know what they call it. Um, 
Let's just draw that with the line tool. That's easy. Then we can go to the scissor tool, cut it where it comes to an end. I can select this, slide it on that path all the way up till it hits that, and that'll work. Now on this one, we'll want to terminate these with the round cap just so it looks good on the interior like that. So that's how I would create all of these feathers. Now, this isn't going to go extremely fast, but it's not hard. It'll take me, it would take me probably about, you know, not talking and explaining everything, about 25 minutes, I'd say, to build all of these. So that's the way I did that. And I was kind of proud of myself for discovering how to pull that, pull that off. So it, if you think in shapes and figure out what methods are going to help you do it, in this case, rounding um, and the shape building tool, it's going to greatly assist your efforts. So if I turn these off, here's all the, the feathers on the first row, all the feathers on the second row. Notice where they go behind content that's covering them, you obviously don't need to build that. So when it comes to the collar of this, uh, uh, of this design, uh, just think of this as a giant donut. And I took this square shape and just adjusted it just to get the angle on the top here. The bottom doesn't matter because we're going to take this donut shape and this skewed kind of uh, square shape and all we're going to do is go to the uh, Pathfinder and go intersect. So intersect is wherever they overlap becomes the new shape. And that's how I created that. Now, obviously, this is going to go behind a lot of the, the feathers. So you're not even going to see most of the content. But creating that content, as you see in my sketch here, uh, was easy because it's just simply geometric um, lines that offset from one another. And we did that here. Now, obviously, we don't see all of this through the feathers. So this is actually how it will look um, when it's built out in a clean fashion. So I just wanted to walk you through all that. Now, when it comes to the scales on the helmet, uh, this was this might seem a little I don't know, a little complicated, but it really isn't because all I do is I focus on one feather and then all I did is I just figured out where it would start at the top and just copied it until I saw how it ended up down here. And if I thought it was too big or too small, I would enlarge it or scale it down. So that's how I figured out what size. Once I had the size figured out, it's just copy and pasting uh, to put them into their proper orientation. So not hard, not hard at all. And then on the front here, we have uh, the same type of feathers, but they're going at an angle and they're a little larger because I thought that looked better that way. Now, when it comes to the headdress, here's all the ones that are snakes. And actually, out of this whole design, the only thing that are filled shapes are the eyes of the snakes and the eyes of the buzzard, turkey, whatever species of bird you think it is that's on the headdress. So uh, not hard. Now, once I had this, I needed to go ahead and kind of figure out the weight of the line. This is, I used a one point here. If I select this and go to stroke, you can see it's a one point, a one point to build everything. But now what I want to do is I want to determine, is that the weight I want the final art to be, one point or not? So what I'm going to do is Command A, select everything, minus the eyes, since the eyes are fills. We don't need to worry about that. And in this case, I think bumping it up twice as thick. I don't want to go too thick because I want this to be kind of a thin line. That's the charm of it. So I'm going to bump this up to two. And I think that looks, I think that's going to work. I think that looks pretty good. Now to make it art that I can reuse later or go back and make adjustments, I would save this artwork um, on its own before I'd expand anything. It's always important to do that. That's why in many build files, I'll have a junk drawer where I save a copy of it. In this case, just assume I did that already. What we're going to do now is select all of these, and we're going to go to Object, we're going to go to Path, and we're going to go to Outline Stroke. It'll change all the strokes to just fills, no stroke, 
And I do that. Once all those are converted like that, I'll go to the Pathfinder and I'm going to go Unite. And that's going to unite everything together so it's one unified whole. Think of a wire map of sorts. If I go ahead and grab this tool and let's say we do this, I copy it and I paste it behind. You can see through the interior of this shape because it's just a wireframe. There is no fills in here. It's just showing the white of the background or with this color behind it, the color showing through uh, those areas. So I just wanted to call that out really quick. Now, once you've done this, you want to create clean art. And what I mean by clean art is I would select this. Let's say you want to color all these independent shapes, different colors, and then do detailing on it with shading. Um, I kind of did that in my modern culture. I wanted to handle this in a more sophisticated manner. So I'm not going to do that. But if you wanted to clean it up, you'd have to select this and go to object compound and right now it's uh, it's a compound we'll want to go to release and then you might need to go here and ungroup it a few times okay one time to ungroup it and now all these shapes are on top but you could color these whatever you want white or otherwise now I'm not going to go through all that because um, that that would take some time to do that I mean a fast way you can kind of do it is select everything minus the the exterior shape that kind of contains it all and you could fill it with white but notice you're going to lose some detail because the stacking order has changed so some of these shapes uh, that are here aren't showing up even though if you go to key line they're there you just you just have to go and put those in the proper orientation and clean it up so what you would end up with is artwork that looks like this so if i go back in here and grab the black it moves that and all these shapes in here are just little islands of white floating on a black sea if you will and you could colorize it now i'm not going to do that with this artwork uh, but if you wanted to take this if you get access to the exercise files which you can find information on in the description for this movie um, you could take this and try coloring it and show me what you come up with. I wouldn't mind seeing that. That'd be kind of cool. We're going to handle it in a little different way. So we're going to keep it line work here, but I just want this line work to be colored on a dark background specifically. So if I select this and we just go over here and select that color, that looks pretty good. Uh, kind of Halloweenish, of course, uh, with uh, black and orange. That's what most people tend to think of. Green isn't bad. Uh, here we go with the light teal. That's not bad either. We're dealing with the Egyptian queen, so royal color. Purple isn't a bad one either. Let's try this one, more of a bronze type color. That looks kind of cool. Uh, select this. Maybe we go more distinctly gold. You know, that looks good, a yellowish type of gold, or maybe it's more traditional gold. I think that looks really nice. Or maybe even a darker kind of burnt gold. That doesn't look bad either. So uh, this is how I want to end up coloring it. I think on this one, I'm going to end up with the, uh, the light gold. I think that looks uh, pretty cool. Now, here's... Another thing you can do with this artwork when you, you have it like this is if you convert it to paths, you can do other things. Let's say you wanted it to be more organic. So let's explore adding more organics. We're going to have to zoom in here because this path represents the thickness here. Uh, and this stroke is two points thick. So we had a two point stroke, but as you can see, this is all converted to paths. All I did is I took this stroke and with the width tool, this one right here, I went in and created this unique um, profile. You can see it's selected up here. Now, how does that work? Well, if I go in and make more edits to this, maybe I want this one to be wider so I can move that or I can add a wide section here or go in here and add a wide section. Or maybe I want this to be a little more, or maybe if that's too much, bring it in, make it a little narrow. And you can see how that changes the profile. This is what you can do to create what's called a pattern brush. 
Now, that's all I did, and I converted it uh, to uh, this shape. Now, the only thing you have to keep in mind with the pattern brush is it has to be identical on each end. So once it repeats on a shape, it kind of makes one continuous path. But this is one simple way you could add some organics uh, to your artwork. So that's all we're going to do is we're going to go and open up the brushes palette here. There it is. Let's go ahead and bring that over here. We're going to drag this over here and we're going to select pattern brush, click OK. First thing you want to do is go to tints. This will allow you to color it. These we can keep as is. It looks like Illustrator's algorithm built an OK corner, so I'm not going to ch change that. Usually it doesn't always work, so I turned off, but in this case it did. Let's go here. We'll go organic line, and we'll go OK. So we've created an organic line brush. So what are we going to do with this? Well, we're going to zoom in on this artwork here. We're going to select it. Keep in mind, it's just a fill, no stroke. So we're going to add a stroke to it. But the stroke we're going to add, let's say, we're going to probably adjust that. Let's go ahead and add this organic uh, line to this stroke. What that's going to do is it's going to place this pattern uh, line on the stroke. And it's going to create a more organic flair for the line work. So look at how it now looks a little more, uh, a little more hand drawn. I think this is a little big. Let's make it and to adjust the size, you adjust the stroke size. So we're going to change this to 0.75, and I think that looks a little better. Maybe you can turn on rounding here might help. I think that looks good. Now, this isn't perfect, but you can see how it does add a nice organic quality. We'd want to expand this, though, and convert it to shapes and clean it up because you will run in. You can't avoid it. There's areas like this where it's going to create this weird kind of overlap. Now, if you want to resolve it, um, sometimes you can by going to the rounding tool and you can round, you can round a section like this and it will fix that. Or you can go here and add rounding there and it'll fix that. It's only where it comes to a corner and the corners can cause those weird issues. But at this size, nobody's gonna see that detail and it's pretty easy to clean up. So if you wanted to get more organic and not so clean and precise, uh, this is one way you could do that. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, this is kind of like a little side trail in this movie because that's not the way I wanna go. I wanna keep mine distinctly clean and uh, straightforward. But here's the beauty of it. We want to make this look metallic. So I'm going to select this shape. I'm going to go to my graphic styles, and I have this nice little uh, kind of gold metallic uh, gradient I'm going to click on and check out what that does. Now, if I, I think the angle needs to be adjusted, so I'm going to select this, go to the gradient tool like here. Okay. Let's see. Oops, we have to go to fill. There we go. Um, once you have your shape filled with something, make sure you're on fill or else when you click uh, the gradient tool, it won't show you the gradient. It, it, it's kind of dumb. I don't know why they do that. It should just show it automatically, but it doesn't. Anyway, so what we're going to do is rotate this to kind of match the angle in the chin like that. And I think this is going to make it look even more believable when we do that. And I just think that looks really cool. So you might be looking at this and going, that does look cool, but what would you use this for? Well, I think this would work great for maybe it's a cosmetic line and this becomes the branding. Now, one thing I'll point out is notice this art is now smaller in context with the lockup with the type. But I beefed up that interior line. This goes back to saying you always want to save an edible version of your artwork so you can always go back. Knowing I was going to make this smaller, 
I didn't want to use this large one and scale it down, then those negative gaps in between all these shapes would have gotten too thin. And that means you're going to run into production problems. So I went back, beefed it up so when it was smaller, it would read equally as well. So that's why you want to get in the habit of doing that. So even though my original modern culture art was multicolored, I really like how this design simplified down into one color, a gold metallic, if you will. And it's a fun style anyone can approach and pull off, in my opinion. So I encourage you to take the theme of something that inspires you and think in shapes and create a graphic illustration of it. Like any skill, you only get better at it the more you do it. If you like this movie, please consider sharing a link to my YouTube channel on social media. Some of you have done that, and I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe as well. Thank you for watching People of Process. I hope this content helps you to improve your own creative process.